At a national level, rates of population growth vary from country to country. The growth rates of less economically developed countries are very rapid compared to more economically developed countries. In fact, some countries even have negative population growth. Japan's population has experienced negative rates of natural increase since 2007 and is expected to lose 21% of its population by the year 2050. One way we measure population growth is by calculating the doubling time. This is the length of time it takes for population to double in size. It is calculated by dividing 70 by the growth rate. There are two main factors that influence population change. They are natural increase and net migration. Natural increase is the birth rate minus the death rate. The birth rate is the number of live births per 1,000 people per year. The death rate is the number of deaths per 1,000 people per year. The rate of natural increase can be expressed as a percentage. For example, in 2014, Thailand had an estimated birth rate of 11.26 births per 1,000 population. The death rate was 7.72 deaths per 1,000 population. Therefore, the natural increase equals 11.26 minus 7.72 equals 3.54. That is 0.354%. On average, a total fertility rate of 2.1 children per woman is considered to be the replacement rate. Today, in many European countries, women are giving birth to less than this figure. In many cases, the only thing stopping the population from shrinking has been high rates of net migration. Migration is the term we use for the movement of people in and out of an area. We use the term immigration when people enter a country and emigration when people leave a country. Net migration is immigration minus emigration. Changes in population are best represented using a line graph. For example, this graph shows population change over time in Australia. On a global scale, the world's population will grow simply if the birth rate is greater than the death rate. Until the 19th century, the world's population had grown slowly. But since the Industrial Revolution, there has been an explosion in the growth of the world's population, as can be seen from this line graph. By 1804, the world's population reached 1 billion. By 1959, the world's population was 3 billion, and by 1999, it had doubled to 6 billion. Today, there are over 7 billion people on the Earth. The changes in birth and death rates and their effect on the total population of a country can be shown on the demographic transition model. The highlighted gap between the birth rate and death rates on the model is the natural increase. In the first stage of the model, both birth rates and death rates are high and the population is fluctuating. The high birth rates are due to factors such as the lack of contraceptives, or in many poor communities, large families are seen as desirable because children can be put to use working on the family farm. The high death rates are due to factors such as the lack of health care and rampant disease, or famine, the lack of clean water and sanitation, wars, or the lack of an education. This stage in the model is typical of pre-industrial Britain in the 18th century. Today it is associated with the least economically developed countries in the world today. In the second stage of the model, birth rates remain high but the death rate begins to fall. As a result, the overpopulation begins to rise. Factors influencing the falling death rate include Improved health care Improved hygiene The boiling of drinking water Improved sanitation through the construction of central water systems and collecting garbage Improved food production and storage Key developments here include things like the agricultural revolution of the 18th century 
the invention of refrigeration, tractors replacing horse and plough, genetically modified crops, and modern irrigation methods. Also, improved transport for food. All these things also lead to a decrease in infant mortality rates. That is, the number of deaths for children under one year old per 1,000 per year. This stage was typical of Britain in the 19th century, and today in countries such as Nigeria and Bangladesh, which are experiencing similarly rapid population growth. In the third stage of the model, birth rates start to fall, while the death rates continue to fall. Population continues to rise, but the rate of that growth starts to slow down. Death rates have declined due to increased overall living standards, but the sanitation and health care, which in turn have also led to lower rates of infant mortality. The declining birth rates can be attributed to the following sorts of reasons. The availability of contraceptives. Since the 1960s, when the contraceptive pill became widely available. Further, with people staying in education longer, and more women entering the workforce, people are delaying having children, which in turn shortens a woman's childbearing years. Attitudes towards having large families change in societies when mechanisation of farms has reduced the need for so many workers in rural areas. Today, the third stage is typical of countries such as India and South Africa. In stage four of the model, both birth rates and death rates are low thus causing a stabilisation of the total population growth. Most more economically developed countries are in stage 4. For example, New Zealand, Australia, the United States and the United Kingdom. These countries have strong economies, a highly educated population, strong healthcare systems and more women in the workforce. These countries are also highly urbanised due to the previous migration of people from rural to urban areas. In recent years, some demographers have added a fifth stage to the model. This is because some more economically developed countries, such as Japan, have total fertility rates below the 2.1 replacement level, resulting in a declining population. Some European countries, such as Germany, also have total fertility rates below the replacement level, but have managed to maintain their population through immigration. The negative population growth rate does not have an immediate effect though, due to demographic momentum. This phenomena occurs when a large proportion of a country's population is of childbearing age. Even if the total fertility rate of people in a country drops below replacement level, it could be a generation or two before the absolute numbers of people being born still will exceed the numbers of people dying. For example, from 1979 to 2015, China had its one-child policy. Despite this policy, population growth continued anyway. This is because the number of people becoming adults in 1979 was based on the number of births around the 1950s, not 1979. As a result, the Chinese population growth maintained the same momentum of increase for 20 years before finally starting to stabilise. The different stages of the model can also be compared to the three types of population pyramids.